Hey devs, welcome to episode one of this brand new Unity series where we build a complete 2D RPG game from scratch using Unity 2D. This series is perfect for beginners and intermediate Unity developers who want to sharpen their skills while creating something fun and meaningful. A full RPG game from the ground up. And good news, every tutorial comes with free downloadable assets, sprites, animations, and prefabs so you can follow along easily. Each chapter builds on the last, so if you stick with me, you'll not only learn Unity, you'll master it. Let's start by creating a new Unity project. Open Unity Hub, hit New Project, choose 2D, and name it something like RPG Adventure. Once we're inside Unity, let's organize our project to keep things clean. Create the following folders. Scripts, Scenes, Sprites, Animations, Prefabs, UI. This will help us manage everything as the project grows. Now let's import our player sprites. I've added the download link in the comments section, so make sure to grab it and drag it into your project's sprites folder. If you click on the player sprite in the project window, you'll see in the inspector that we have the entire sprite sheet. Make sure that the sprite mode is set to multiple. This tells Unity we're working with a sprite sheet that contains multiple frames. Now, if you click the small arrow next to the sprite in the project window, you'll see that all the player sprites have already been sliced and are ready to use. Idle, walking, up, down, everything's in place. Let's drag one of the player sprites into the scene view to test it. You'll probably notice that it looks a little blurry. That's because of Unity's default filter settings. To fix that, select the main player sprite sheet in the project window. Then in the inspector, scroll down to filter mode and set it to point, no filter. Click Apply. Now the sprite is sharp and pixel perfect, exactly how a retro RPG should look. If your sprite colors still look off, scroll a bit further and change the format to RGBA 32-bit, then hit Apply again. That should clean up any weird coloration or transparency issues. Awesome. Now we've got a clean, crisp pixel art character ready to animate. Next, we'll create animations for idle and walking in four directions and hook it all up with Unity's animator system. Now that we've got our sprite looking nice and sharp, let's start preparing it for gameplay by adding some physics components. First of all, select your player game object in the hierarchy. Go to the inspector, click Add Component, and choose Capsule Collider 2D. Now adjust the collider size and offset so it fits the player's body properly, especially around the torso and legs. You want it to match the actual movement area, not the entire sprite size. Next, add a rigid body 2D component to the same player object. By default, Unity applies gravity to rigid body objects. But since this is a top-down RPG, we don't want our player falling through the floor. So, set the gravity scale to zero. One last tweak. Go to the constraint section inside the rigid body 2D component. Under Freeze Rotation, check the box for Z-axis. That prevents the player from accidentally spinning when colliding with objects. And that's it. Your player now has a clean capsule collider, no gravity, and locked rotation. Everything is ready for smooth and controlled movement in a top-down world. Now, let's add some movement logic to our player. Inside the Scripts folder, right-click and create a new C-sharp script. Name it Player Movement with no spaces. Then double-click to open it in your code editor. I'm using Visual Studio, but you can use whatever you prefer. All right, first, let's get rid of the start method. We're not using it right now, so we can keep the code clean. At the top of the class, let's define a movement speed and set it to 5 feet by default. Then, let's create a reference to the rigid body 2D component so we can apply movement to our player. Let's go over what we just did.
In the fixed update method, which is made for physics updates, we read player input from the horizontal and vertical axes, so that works with arrow keys by default. Then we apply movement using rb.velocity. Now, let's save the script and go back to Unity. Select your player game object, then drag and drop the player movement script into the inspector. You'll see a new field appear for the Rigid Body 2D. Just drag the player's own Rigid Body 2D component into that slot to assign it. Now hit play. You can now move your character using the keyboard. It's a simple system, but it gives us full control over the player's direction and speed and it'll be the foundation for animations and collision next. Now, in this part, we're going to animate our player so that they're not just sliding around, but actually walking. Go to the top menu, click on Window, then Animation, to open the Animation tab. Before we begin, let's give our player a proper name so things stay clean. I'll just rename mine to player, if you haven't already. Now, select your player game object, then in the Animation tab, click Create. Let's save the new animation in the Animations folder and name it something like Player Walk Down. We'll start with the down walking animation. Now the fun part, animating. Head over to your Sprites folder. Select all the frames for the walking down animation. You can hold shift and click to select them all. Then just drag and drop them into the timeline in the animation window. If you hit play right now, the animation works, but it's way too fast. To fix that, click and drag the right edge of the timeline keyframes to space them out a bit. This will slow down the animation. And here's a cool tip. To make the animation loop more smoothly, just copy the first frame and paste it at the end of the timeline. That way, it ends where it began. No snapping or popping. Now hit play again, and you'll see that the walking animation looks natural and fluid. And that's it. We've successfully created our first animation clip. Our player is no longer just floating. They now have a walking animation ready to be connected with movement logic and direction handling. In the next part, we'll dive into Unity's animator controller and hook up all directions, up, down, left, right, based on keyboard input. Don't forget, all the sprite sheets used in this animation are available for free download in the comments section below. Now, let's add an idle animation for the player, following the same exact steps we used for the walking animation. But before we start, Let's make sure we bring in the second player sprite sheet that includes the idle animations. Just drag the new file into the sprites folder. Make sure it's sliced like the first one. Sprite mode set to multiple, then slice it using the sprite editor if it's not sliced already. Now, select the player game object again and go back to the animation window. At the top left, click on the drop down where it says the current animation name and select create new clip. Let's name this one Player Jar Idle Down and save it inside the Animations folder. Just like before, select the idle animation frames from the new sprite sheet. Shift plus click to select them all then drag and drop them into the timeline. Again, it's a little fast by default, so stretch the frames in the timeline by dragging the right side to slow down the animation. 
and for a smooth loop, just copy the first frame and paste it at the end. That gives it a nice natural idle cycle. Now hit play and you'll see that the idle animation looks pretty good. Smooth and subtle, just like in a classic top-down RPG. Awesome! You now have both walking and idle animations ready to go. In the next part, we'll dive into Unity's animator controller and set up transitions between idle and walking depending on movement input. This is where your character will really come to life, changing animations based on direction and speed.